Once again, welcome back to the drawing board. Uh, in the last couple, we've talked about the design of equipment and the resistances of that equipment. We've looked at the props and we've looked at the whalers. Uh, now we'll have a little bit of a look at the other side, where the forces come from. Uh, today we're going to look at excavation surcharges. Uh, now what do I mean by surcharges? Uh, it's an extra force that's applied around the excavation that will add a little bit more load to the kit. Uh, for instance, uh, excavators, uh, heavy machinery moving around, uh, you could have the uh, force of a building, uh, foundations, or it could be uh, rail or road or some other traffic nearby. Uh, these will all add a vertical pressure onto the ground, which will eventually become a horizontal force, which this kit will have to resist. Uh, surcharges come in all kinds of different flavours, and the main four are written up on the board here. You've got a blanket surcharge, which is basically a uniform pressure just applied to the whole area of ground around, a search, uh, around an excavation. You then have an area surcharge, similar to this, but it's only in one localised area. This might be a, a crane pad or a pad foundation or something similar that just applies a concentrated force in that area. Two very similar ones at the bottom here, you have a line surcharge and you've got a, uh, a strip surcharge. Uh, dealt with in very slightly different ways, which we'll look at on the other side of the board. Um, but that's basically, again, a wall or a foundation that runs alongside your excavation. Um, the difference between this area and this strip is that this is assumed to just have infinite length. It just goes on for the whole length of your excavation. Whereas this one has a finite end to it. Um, look at a little bit of uh, basic ranking theory to work out these pressures. Um, generally speaking, the pressure at ground level is going to be zero. Um, and then it increases according to this little equation here, where your active pressure is Ka times by your vertical stress, take away a little bit for cohesion. In this case, the vertical stress is equal to the uh, density of the ground times by the depth of ground. And so you end up with this uh, pressure at the bottom. Now when we add a blanket surcharge, this is why it's the easiest to deal with, instead of starting at zero, you start at Ka times the value of that surcharge. So you're basically just adding a big block onto it, so that's nice and easy to deal with. And then at the end, you just end up with the same again, Ka gamma Z plus Ka times your surcharge, take off your bit for cohesion. What happens with the others though? When you have a concentrated load, you're not going to have this nice, easy, uniform distribution to work with. Um, previously, we may have used something like Boussinesque, uh, which will give you a uh, good approximation if you want to have a look at a technical blog from uh, Tony's technical blog uh, talking about the 45 degree rule of thumb and it goes into the Boussinesque equations and has a, a pretty good conversation about this uh, 45 degrees and whether Boussinesque really represents what happens in real life. Um, we've started using this, uh, I'm going to say new, but it's back in 1998, uh, Georgidis and Anagnostopoulos uh, came up with a system which is a little bit more empirically based and gives you more results that will uh, reflect the kind of things you really see on site. Um, you take your surcharge and you spread it out at a 45 degree angle until you hit your uh, excavation line there. And you get this Q dash. Q dash is the reduced value of this pressure and it's according to the ratio of that width to that width. So it'll be slightly smaller, it, it's been spread out a bit. You then flip that around 90 degrees against here, and the value of pressure here is your Ka times by the pressure of that surcharge over the area that will be covered by that. Let's have a look at a line load. Uh, I said that was dealt with slightly differently, but in this case we've actually decided, rather than using a line load which can be quite complicated, we'll spread that line load out. You're never really going to get a knife edge load on the ground. At the very minimum, we've taken 300 millimetres, because you may get a 300 millimetre wide wall foundation, um, but you can spread that across 300 mil, and then, in the same way as a spread surcharge here, you can spread that out, and so you've got this slightly smaller Q dash here. I've written this here, Ka cos delta Q dash. Um, the cos delta, that's involving your wall friction. One thing to be careful of, if you've already modified your Ka to take into account your wall friction, you shouldn't really apply this cost delta a second time. It's kind of giving you the benefit twice. So if you're going to use the unmodified Ka without wall friction, feel free to apply a bit of wall friction to that surcharge. If you've already modified your Ka, take that cost delta out of that equation. You don't want to be too optimistic with these. Um, how do you deal with the area surcharge then? Because it's not got an infinite length. 
It's very similar to this, except you're spreading out in 45 degrees in a horizontal direction. And that just gives you an area of surcharge against the back of the sheets that will be influenced by this. Um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight. It's not the whole picture, um, but you can have a look on Tony's technical blog. There's a few little bits and pieces. Uh, and if you really want to, download a version of our GFSafe. Um, that will give you a little bit of instruction in how to do some geotechnical designs. Uh, so thank you very much and I hope you come back to the drawing board soon. Mm -hmm.